until the December ZBA meeting to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Matt Kaiser. Present. Richard Brooks. Here. Keith Perkins. Here. Brad Fredette. Present. Anthony Jones. Here. Ken Hilton. Here. Okay, the first order of business, I'll appoint Mr. Jones as a voting member. Number one, approval of minutes of the meeting in November. Actually, for the minutes, Mr. Hilton, you were here for the last meeting, correct? We'll switch Mr. Hilton for the uh, voting on the minutes. Approval of minutes of the meeting of the November 2nd, 2023 meeting. What's the wish of the board? Mr. Make a motion to accept them as presented. Second by Mr. Hilton. Any discussion on them? All those in favor of approving the minutes, raise your right hand. Minutes are approved. Okay. Number two, old business. Any old business come before the board? Ms. Crosley. No old business. Any old business from board members? Okay, seeing so now we'll move on to new business. <sighs> Item three alpha, K925 Dog Services LLC. Jacqueline Pierce is seeking a variance from table 4A2 to allow a commercial kennel on a property located at 15 Rocky Hill Road in the Agricultural District Assessors Map 12, Lot 13, ZBA Case 18 2023. It's a public hearing. I will open the public hearing. Ms. Crosley. Okay. So the applicant is seeking to establish a commercial kennel to keep no more than 15 total dogs on site. This would include the owner's dogs. Um, commercial kennels are permitted in the agricultural district through special exception typically, so long as the following two additional criteria have been met, uh, provided that the law area is not less than five acres and no building or open enclosure for keeping of dogs shall be located within 100 feet from any lot line. The subject lot is about 2.287 acres and the areas for keeping the dogs are within 100 feet of lot lines so due to those factors, um, a variance is required. This, that is why you're hearing the variance tonight. Um, if the application is approved, this would require site plan approval um, with the planning board. I did research the lot and there are no prior zoning board or site plan applications found related to the property. The applicant has answered the five criteria and the board can take action on the application tonight. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Crosley? Okay, will the applicant please step forward and state how you meet the criteria? Fully understand that. Um, so, if you have a copy of your application, oh, no. if you can briefly go through Sorry, it and get it. your copy. Briefly go through how you meet the criteria. You don't have to state, restate it word for word anyway. You can add, add in, it's up to you. Um, so, like a I don't really have clients come to my house because I have a shop in, in um, Dover that the dogs stay at during the week and they just stay at my house overnight. So um, it's not gonna increase traffic at all or have any parking issues because they just park in my driveway for two seconds to pick their dog up or drop them off and leave if they're if it's a, outside of my shop hours. Um, there's, I don't know, I clean up all the time. The dogs are quiet. I, I don't allow them to bark because I train dogs professionally, so having a bunch of unruly dogs isn't exactly what I do. Um, um, I've actually been doing this for four and a half years in the same spot, and it's only become an issue um, recently because I didn't know that I was supposed to apply a variance, and um, I have, yeah. Um, there's no competition with other businesses around. Um, it increases revenue in the town because otherwise I would not be able to keep my house. So, um, and then the $6,700 in taxes I pay wouldn't go into the town. Um, um, yeah, uh, I don't really know what else to say. It's, okay, yeah. so what will happen here is that I'm gonna ask you to step aside yeah. and then we'll have, <coughs> excuse me, any abutters who want to speak either for or against your application and then we're going to ask you to come back up here and the board's going to probably ask you some questions okay um and any so you can provide us additional information okay okay thank you yep, thank you you can hold on to that any abutters like to speak ma'am in the back you could come up and uh state your name and address 
everyone. Hi, um, my name is Rita Casey. I live at 17 Rocky Hill Road, directly across the street from Jackie. I've been there for three and a half years. Um, she's a very responsible dog owner. She's outside with the dog. She has a kennel there. Um, and if they bark for a few minutes, um, and she quiets them right down as she brings them in. So it's never been an issue. Actually, she's my quietest neighbor. <laughs> It's a very noisy street on Wall Street. There's a lot of kids riding bikes and yelling and um, cars and traffic going in and out and motorcycles and trucks and cars and stuff like that, which is a lot of that is when the dogs bark. <laughs> but um, she's a very quiet neighbor. The dogs maybe bark for two or three minutes and then you hear her say, quiet, <laughs> and then that's it. So off and on, so it's never an issue. I just want to support her and her and Deidre, and she's been there the whole time I've lived there with me. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Any other neighbors, like any other butters, like to speak, either for or against? Larry Francor, One Worlds Road. Paula Francor, One World Street. Yep. If you just w speak once at one at a time so she can get it down on pa paper, if otherwise it makes it difficult for her to record. Well, <clears throat> we I've lived there for over 50 years. Um, my house and her kennel are within 20 feet. Um, when I walk up into my house and go, go into my TV room, when I look down, that's what I see in the kennel. I cannot walk in my yard without the, or do any yard work without the dogs barking. She will quiet them down. Um, I have been living doggy daycare for almost four years now. We have talked to the code enforcement officer, um, the previous one and this one. I have a feeling that's why the application is in. She has been bringing home anywhere from four to 18 dogs randomly, and we've complained about it. They bark at my grandkids when they just walking up and down the street. Now I'd like to ask you, would you like to look at that out of your TV room? Uh, I would just like to say we have a, um, private, a privacy fence, which is probably a foot or so away from her chain link fence. And if you just if you just walk by, the dogs can't see you, but they will charge at the fence and bark, and, and it's just total chaos. I've counted up to 22 dogs that she's had in that area. Even when they're playing, they're, you know, they're... They're playing, but dogs, they're growling, they're barking. Um, you look out your window and you got all these dogs that are going to the bathroom and, you know, she's right behind them picking it up. But, I mean, it's just, uh, we pay hefty taxes where we live. And I just feel that there's just too many dogs. It's too much commotion. There's a lot of noise. And uh, during the summer, there's been days where she has gone to work and the windows will be open and the dogs that are left in the house will bark and there's no one there to quiet them down. My grandkids are afraid of them. We have a rock that even my boys, they're in their 40s, used to play on. It's on city property, the end of my driveway, it's city property. And when my grandchildren were playing on it, the dogs charged at the fence and were barking and then Jackie had to come out and yell at my, my grandchildren. It's nothing personal against Jackie, it's just there's way too many dogs, and it's, it's noisy, and whoever I spoke to, I believe his name was Paul, before Shane, the code assessment person, uh, years ago, I think it's when she first moved in, I said, what's going on with all these dogs? He told me, and I repeated this to Shane, there was, when I complained about all the dogs, and is it legal, and does she have a license, and he said, "There's she can have as many dogs as she wants, and call the police. That, that's how he told me to handle it. He goes, if you're sick of the noise, and, and that's what I was told, so we kind of backed off. But it's, it's not just recently. This is ongoing, and I've been retired for three years, and I'm home a lot, and it's, an, it's really a nuisance. 
I've got three horses across the street. They're fine. I've had dogs in the past in our neighborhood. I've lived there 45 years. The previous owners had three dogs. Not a problem. People walk down our street to walk their dogs, and her dogs will go nuts when somebody walks by. Children or anybody on a bike, they bark. They go crazy. You're going to tell me that you can keep 15 to 18 dogs, 10 dogs. This is frequently, very frequently, that they're going to be quiet whether they're trained or not when you have that many dogs together in a small area. So it's, uh, it's, it's just been a real nuisance, and I'm glad you're having this meeting so we can express our concerns. This has taken away our privacy. We've been there for a long time, and uh, let me ask you, if that was your house, I'd, I'd ask you to go down and look at the properties. We're the one that get the brunt of everything. Would you want a dog kennel there? I'm not trying to hurt her financially. We've sent, she's sent pictures and videos in. Ask the code enforcement officer. We're totally against it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other abutters that would like to speak either for or against? It's your only chance. I have written correspondence as well. You have written correspondence as yes. well? Well, very well. Okay. Um, so I have two that we received. Um, one was a voicemail that Anna transcribed for us. Um, this is submitted by a Karen and John Slater of 18 Rocky Hill Road. Um, she stated, my name is Karen Slater. I live at 18 Rocky Hill Road. I got a notice about tomorrow night's, tonight's zoning board meeting. I'm looking at new business on the agenda of the K9 to 5 dog services owned by Jackie Pierce across the street from me. And I see she wants to put in a commercial kennel at her property at 15 Rocky Hill Road. As a neighbor and an abutter, I am totally against this happening across the street. She already has about 10 dogs there as it is, and they can be disruptive at times. There's a lot of traffic coming in and out currently without her business being there. It is a residential area, and it shouldn't be allowed for commercial business. My husband and I, John Slater and Karen Slater of 18 Rocky Hill Road, who are across the street from this, put in our opposal, opposition to this business across the street. Um, not sh thank you. And the second statement that we received is from a Jan Williams of 13 Rocky Hill Road. Um, I am writing to voice my concerns regarding the variance requested by Jackie Pierce at 15 Rocky Hill Road for a commercial kennel on, on her property. This is not personal as I have no issues with Jackie. We have a friendly relationship and I love dogs. My biggest concern is the noise level with so many dogs there, particularly in the summer. I understand that Jackie does her best to keep them from barking, but dogs bark no matter how hard you try to keep them quiet. I am most concerned about the noise in the summer months when they are all outside and we have our windows open. I know that they are with her in Dover during the week, but weekends when they are here is when we want to be outside enjoying our own backyard. Another concern I have is that within the next few years, I plan to sell my house. I worry that buyers will not be interested in living near a commercial kennel. Although property values have risen over the past few years, I believe that increase has been driven market driven and that having a kennel close by could affect my resale value. I also think that adding a commercial business will change the landscape of the neighborhood. If this business is allowed, will there be more? Even though we are zoned agri as agricultural, with the exception of Tri-City Christian Academy, this is a residential neighborhood. It has been for the past 20 plus years. I have lived here and hope to remain as such. Thank you, Jan Williams, 13 Rocky Hill. Okay, thank you. All right, any abutters? Okay, Ms. Pierce, will you please come forward? Can you help? Um, I, I guess I'm a little confused as to what you're doing at your house versus what you're doing in Dover. Maybe you could explain that to me. I'm a little confused. The dogs sleep at my house. So in, in Dover, all the all the, the dogs go to my shop in Dover, and they get training, and they get it's basically like day, uh, daycare with training. So they get training, and they get to play together. I'm there 
10 hours a day, Sunday, basically through Friday. And um, then they come home and sleep at the house. And on Saturdays, I have my, my day off where I'm still working the dogs and training them. And um, so that's like the only day that they're really, Sundays I, I do group classes at my shop and they're, so um, it's, I don't know. So, so I'm just trying to understand. I'm so, yeah. I'm so, so people drop their dogs off and, and, and I assume pick them up in Dover? Yes, usually, okay. almost always. Yeah, okay. it's, it's. Do you, do, I'm going to just piecemeal yeah, this yeah, through just fine. so I understand. I just, I feel, yeah. do, do, you trans, do you transport dogs from Dover to your house? Yes. Yeah. Approximately how many dogs do you transfer? Um, the, I have seven of my own dogs, so um, 15 at the most. Okay. Yeah. You, and do you do that every day? No. God, no. It's it's it depends on how many dogs I have doing board and train with me. So, like right now, I have one other dog at my house. I have so I have my seven and my one board and train pup. And so, like on the um, holidays, it's busier. I'm usually fully booked, but during the week, I'm I'm not usually fully booked. So I have um, four to eight, not twenty two to eighteen, which is a grossly <laughs> absurd um, lie. Uh, so. Um, I've never had that many dogs in my house, so I've, the most I had was 16 on a crossover where I had clients that dropped off in the morning and that client picked up in the afternoon. Okay. Um, so do people drop off their dogs at your house on Monday through Friday? No. At night? Monday through Friday is at the shop only, and it is never at my house Monday through Friday. Okay. So then, even, during, then during the weekends? Yeah, Saturdays and Sundays, like I have 8 a.m. Saturdays, 8 to 9 Saturdays, I'll have a client drop off and maybe pick up like that afternoon in your, Sun at your house yeah and then Sundays so it's like every weekend I might have I, I would say I have an average of two clients swinging into my house I don't even have people over my house like I have a lot of dogs it's just not so if if that's the big issue or that's not the big issue but anyway um we're but, just we're just trying to yeah. understand because it, it's, it's not it's not okay yeah All right. um yeah. Right. And right. So I'm going to gonna open up to more questions from the board, and I'm sure we have some. Yeah. Any questions? I honestly think Karen um, and my neighbors across the street were confused. It's, I think they think that I'm building something, not doing what I've been doing for four and a half years because they've, they've never had an issue. Okay. But, yeah. So structurally at your house, what do you have? There, I have a huge living room and a... Um, For the dogs. Yeah, yeah. My living room is 16 by 13. And then I have what I call my kennel room. It's my wood stove room. It would be like a dining room area that is attached to it. That is about an opening almost this big um, that has um, some kennels in it and my wood stove that I don't use. Uh, and that's it. So it's not... There's no exterior building. I'm not building anything. It's just using the same space that I've been using for the same purpose for the last four and a half years since I bought the house June 29th of 2019. Okay. So, it, so you, you have a fenced in yard? Yes. And how high is that fence? Six feet. Six feet. Chain link fence? Yes. That's where the dogs, they go in your house to the outside and back yeah. in. Yeah. Not, they're not outside that fence. You don't walk the dogs in the neighborhood. Unless I'm training well, it could a be dog. dog. Yeah, you can yeah. walk your dog anywhere you want. So yeah. I don't mean to... Right. I'm just trying to understand and, what the and business is. And even the board and trains, I take them out for lessons most of the time. So they're either doing lessons in the house, I'll do a lesson in the yard with them, or I'll, I'll like take them for a walk down the street, although that's not very common because people drive like idiots on Rock, Rocky Hill, and I'm not, I don't want to risk one of my client's dogs for that. Um, or I usually transport them somewhere, like Home Depot or um, Will and Pond or something like that. It's not too often that I'm... I'm training dogs on the street. Like sometimes I'll take a dog down Wells Street, but it's few and far between. Okay. So the ordinance that you're asking for a variance on is, is, is two parts of the ordinance. One is five, the, the, the requirement is five acres to have a dog kennel in an agricultural district. And two is you don't, can't have the kennel within 100 feet. Right. Correct? That's, right. that's the two, if I get this correctly. So I'm going to pause you for a sec because I want to clearly understand and ask a question Ms. Crosley so I understand. So the 100 feet, if, what, what, how did, why does she need a waiver from, for the 100 feet? 
the lot is too small. Yes, so. correct. So it the way it says, no building or open enclosure for keeping of dogs shall be located within 100 feet. Yeah. Her lot is too small. So there's if she's one if the enclosure is 100 feet one way. Yeah. From one With, property line, it's within 100 feet of the other property yeah. line. It's my house, so okay. like. Okay, so, so her lot is smaller than the required, and right. there's no. She there's not spatial room for her to get 100 feet Got from it. it. Got it. Okay, so th for us to grant the variance, um, it, you, basically, what is it that is unique about your property such that we sh that it's okay not to have that five acres or not or not to be within 100 feet of the property line? I'm, I mean, I'm. I literally, like, Rita lives right next door. She's retired. She's home all the time. She's like, you're the quietest person on our street. So I, I don't understand. And I don't understand why the, yeah, um, the noise is a problem. Um, and it's it's inside. Like, so my house is, was renovated, not the person before I bought it, but the person before that renovated it, got it and renovated. So like, I'll come home and I'll shut the door to my <coughs> van or Jeep or whatever, and I barely hear my own dog barking inside. Um, I have ring cameras set up, so if they're barking inside, I can go on and tell them to be quiet or whatever, if they do happen to bark when I'm not there. Um, the dogs that do bark that don't shut up, get bark collars because I want to be nice to my neighbors um, um, and I've been doing this for four and a half years in the same spot and honestly the only reason um, I, I didn't know that I had to apply for a variance when I first moved in I didn't, I didn't realize I didn't do my research and when Paul I think was his name he sent me paperwork to apply for like an occupancy permit two years ago um, and I put in the paperwork for it and I didn't hear anything back so I kind of assumed I stupidly that I was fine and um, so this year uh, the neighbors at one well street have done nothing but complain about every little thing that I have done and they will stand outside and, uh, they will stand in their living room or kitchen and bark at my dogs <laughs> they've thrown stuff into my yard <laughs> um, so um, recording me illegally from their house um, it's and it's just um, yeah, I don't know. I'm Mr. Just Burdett, very frustrated. We have a question. I do. So, as the chair outlined, one of the criteria we look at is the hardship, but also another criteria we look at um, evaluates whether or not the request is is contrary to the spirit of the ordinance. I, I, my understanding or my interpretation of the spirit of the ordinance is to allow for enough space for a buffer to neighbors, amongst other things. Um, how is this proposal not contrary to the spirit of the ordinance? You're asking her, correct? correct. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, what, you mean, like, being so close to the next door neighbors? Like, that's... Correct. Um, I, I don't know. I, I have no argument for that. I can't. Like it's it's a small lot, and so I don't. Know. Unfortunately. I have one more question. How big? How many square feet do you have? Eighteen hundred and fifty total in the house. Yes. And how big of an area do you have for the dogs at the entire eighteen hundred feet? They're, they have, um, like, they hang out in my living room, which is 16 by 13, and then that kennel room is approximately 13 by 13. Um, and then, like, I mean, I have a... No, that's fine. I, that's that's enough information for me. Thank you. <coughs> further, excuse me, further questions for the applicant? Mr. Brooks? Do you have the ability to house the dogs overnight at your Dover location? No, that's why they stay at my house. Well, the the original landlord said absolutely not. Um, I don't ever want to have dogs unsupervised overnight because it's super dangerous, and I don't really feel like being responsible for a bunch of dogs dying in a fire. So um, I 
always said that the, well i used to do this in newmarket i boarded dogs at my house in newmarket i've had my shop for six and a half years and i've always done it this way where they've come home so that they can they don't have to be locked in kennels for anywhere from 10 to 13 hours like some of these other places do um yeah so screwed up it looks like from the aerial photograph that you have a it looks like a square box in the side backyard is that part of what you're using for the dogs or is that just an error in the aerial photo um, i'd have to look at it have to look at it stated that she did not have any pen in the backyard yeah, i'm just not, I'm not sure, sure what, what that this is. So what is this because they that's so Okay, so now you have to that's speak into them. Oh, sorry. That's the fenced-in area for the, for the house, or for the fenced-in uh, yard. Okay, so just to understand clearly, it's not your whole yard that is fenced for the dogs. It's that area that's yeah. fenced for the dogs. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just trying it's, to It's a decent size, but it's okay, not. It's no. not nowhere near the whole entire yard. Like Understood. That would, that would be a little ridiculous, so a little more, more than I need. So, um, I mean, by the time they get done with being at the shop for the week they're dead tired i mean these dogs aren't used to running for 50 hours a week with their parents so um yeah i mean my dogs are probably louder than the any boarding dogs i ever have because my dogs are used to this so it even so i already own seven dogs they're already going to make the noise that is the concern um it's not the boarding dogs that really make noise. Those guys are usually passed out sleeping. Okay. Further questions for the applicant? Any last comments by the applicant? No, I guess not. No, it's your chance to anything you want to say. Correct any wrongs or give us any guidance. I'm, um, my dog's like i have one dog that is kind of a jerk about the fence for the whole charging the fence thing by the way um and i control him immediately and make him sit um and the rock that they're talking about is actually on my property i don't i know they think it's on state property but it's <coughs> past my property line um so um i i didn't want the kids jump playing on it because not because it disrupted my dogs i don't want the kids playing on it because if they fall these guys are going to sue me because that's the people that they are so um, it's, I just don't want to put myself at, at risk. Um, and so uh, that's why I control the dogs. That's why I make sure. And the second they're outside, I bring the dogs in. I don't even bother leaving them out anymore. Like I, I don't stay out. I don't, I just bring them right inside. The second I hear those guys come outside and they're outside a lot. So, um, yeah, I don't know. If you had a, have a seat, I'm going to close the public hearing, and the board will discuss. Close the public hearing. Discussion by the board. Mr. Perdeck. I'll throw my hat the ring on this. I appreciate what she's trying to do. Unfortunately, I think in some ways this is, in fact, directly contrary to the spirit of the ordinance, and I just don't see where it meets the hardship criteria. And we've had valid or invalid, we've had concerns from abutters and even concerns about property value. So <clears throat> those are the hurdles that I'm struggling to overcome. Mr. Brooks? I have to agree. We did hear people concerned about their property values, so that is you know, obviously one of the things that we have to consider, um, you know, the hardship, we didn't have a good explanation as to any hardship that would require a variance here. Um, you know, I, like I do with every property, I try to drive by and take a look at it. She does have a fenced in area on the side towards Wells Street. Well, if you're on Wells Street looking at it, it's to the side of the house. She's on a corner lot, so it's She's got two side lots, technically, two fronts. But, um, 
you know, that fence does seem to be just within a couple feet of the property line from what I observed. And, you know, again, the ordinance here asks for five acres. She does not have that. She's also, you know, much closer than 100 feet. And I would assume that even her house is within 100 feet. So clearly she just doesn't have the room that the variant, that the ordinance calls for in this case. Um, so it's certainly a crowded lot. Thanks for that. I don't see any regional impact mm, I don't here need. at all. I don't Can I make a motion? You may. After review of after review of the per RSA 3656, I see no um, regional. I move that the variance request of K9 to five dog services, Jacqueline Pierce, does not have the potential for regional impact. We have a motion. We have a second. A second by Mr. Perkins. Any discussion on the motion? Motion is that it does not. Have, this application does not have any regional impact. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Mr. Hilton. So five zero, no regional impact. One of the things we have to consider on this uh, variance is that because the variance it goes with the land, that regardless of the, the good intentions of the current landowner, that if a variance is granted, that any future landowner can also have a kennel. They may not be as um, a concerned um, and they may, uh, as, as the existing property owner. So that's one of the things we do have to consider, that this will go with the land and so, so therefore we continue on forever and anyone can put a kennel in there if the house was property is sold. So that's one thing we have to consider. I think I would agree that uh, there's three criteria that we haven't established that have been met. Uh, one is that it won't have effect on adjacent property values. Two, that there's some, there is, we find that there's no unique aspect of the property um, that such that the zoning ordinance unnecessarily creates a hardship due to that um, and the other criteria, the third one would be the um, spear of the ordinance, um, putting businesses in this, this neighbor, this is a very, if you look at, it's a very tight knit neighborhood, even though it's in the agricultural district, they're very small lots, it's very tight and putting businesses, um, it's a kennel, but putting any kind of business in a neighborhood definitely uh, changes the character of the neighborhood. So I don't think it would meet that criteria either. So I would think that as we call them, criteria one, three, and five aren't met. Further discussion by the board. Chair will entertain a motion, Mr. Fredette. After review of the application, the file, and all the information presented to the board, I feel that three of the five criteria have not been satisfied for the reasons discussed. Can you state specifically the criteria? One, three, and five. So that would be the property value. Sorry, the property value criteria, the hardship criteria, and the spirit, and spirit of, the of the ordinance criteria have not been satisfied and I, for the reasons discussed. And I move that the request of K9 to 5 Dog Services LLC Jacqueline Pierce for a variance from Table 4.A.2 to allow a commercial kennel on a property located at 15 Rocky Hill Road be denied. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Hilton. Discussion on the motion. The motion is denied the variance for the reasons that it does not meet criteria. The, it could affect surrounding property values. That is not unique and does not, does not have a uniqueness that affects the hardship and is not in accordance with the spirit of the ordinance. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Variance is denied five to zero. Next item, order on the business, item three, Bravo. Dominique and Diana Mitrod are seeking a variance from section 19.24. A, B, and F to allow an accessory dwelling unit, ADU, that is detached and not internally connected to a property located at 10 Down Street in a residential single family A, R1A district, assessors mop 31, lot 54, ZBA case 19, 2023. There is a public hearing. Open the public hearing. <coughs> Excuse me, Ms. Crosley. 
Yeah. So the applicant is seeking to establish an accessory accessory dwelling unit within the existing detached garage. As the ADU is proposed to be within the detached structure, the ADU would not be con connected internally as required by the ordinance. Accessory dwelling units are permitted on any property containing an owner-occupied single-family dwelling, provided that they meet the criteria set forth in section 19.24 in the zoning ordinance. Um, I did research the property and there are no prior zoning board or site plan <laughs> applications related to the property. I have provided the applicable sections of the accessory dwelling um, ordinance that the applicant is seeking the variance from to allow for this detached structure to the accessory dwelling unit to be within a detached structure. They have addressed the five criteria and so the application is ready for the board to review and take action on. Questions for Ms. Crosley? Okay, seeing none, will the applicant please come forward and state why your application meets the five criteria? You could just state your name. I'm Diana Metro. Dominic Metro. Thank you. Gary. <laughs> That's not of our concern. <laughs> Okay, so so we have the, the paper. Yep. So number one, um, so we're on a residential street. We're not quite at the end, but near the end. Um, no change would be made to the exterior of the buildings. Utilities would be dependent on the main plumbing and such. Um, so it wouldn't diminish property values. Should I just keep going? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, not contrary to the public interest. Uh, so the ADU would be in the existing within the existing structure, and so we have four we have four adult children, and <laughs> this we have our daughter who's staying with us and her children and an adult son who goes to school at, in Portland and he commutes right now. So he's in his mid twenties, and so this ADU was for him to to stay there to move there when it's made. It's about, it's 584 square feet, 24 by 24, and it's above a garage. The stairway, a stair access is interior. Um, so nothing would change on the outside. We just will allow him to have his own space and hopefully um, stay there after he finishes college. And you know, the housing market is tough, so he may stay and continue to live in our area in our house and so that's what that's for and as we get older maybe I'm, i might not be telling it all in the right order but okay okay as we get older um we're on social security we we were um yeah, um part-time work but social security income and as we get closer to retirement or full retirement am i retired now um in the future as some families do Maybe our more of our family would live in the larger house, and we would go to the smaller. Maybe we wouldn't need as much space. So that's that's in the future. So that's those are these options that we'd like to have. And okay, so, um, no additional people would be on the property. No, we have plenty of parking. We each have one vehicle, so no additional parking. Now number three, the hardship. Um, is that the hardship one? Okay. The, um, so uh, the unique feature of our property is that there's a detached garage. It's the largest garage in our neighborhood, an extended neighborhood, very big kind of thing. Um, so what makes it unique, it's not attached. It's 18 feet from our house. And if we add an addition, to, if we, to meet the variance as it said, to add an addition so you could go into this, so it would be attached, it would be large. <laughs> And if we want to attach it to the garage, it would be very large. And, and that would block the access to the backyard. I, I gave pictures. I have, I have some that are a little better, which I could give you. But um, one side of the property, we have a third of an acre, I think. One side is, uh, there's a tree, and then that's the property line. Then there's our house. And then there's this um, fence that was there when we got there. And then it goes right up to the garage. And on the other side, the fence is it's a completely fenced in backyard. The people had dogs before. Um, that other side goes right to the property line. So to go to our backyard, 
we would go through this open, we would open this gate between the two buildings and go in. So that would block the access if we made an addition and it would be very cost prohibitive. And I don't know if you want. It might be better. Sure. Um, I, I gave him pictures, it's probably pretty simple. Yep, we have, we have, we have all but one. Yep, yeah. yep, we have all, we have some of them, but that's fine. Where the property ends on both sides and we don't really walk around it to get to the backyard. We just go through the middle. And um, let's see. So there wouldn't be any exterior changes to the appearance. Inside would be aesthetically nicer, upstairs. You know, it's, and our son would be able to live there and not contrary to the spirit would be, we're not trying to, we don't want to make a multifamily housing or a business um, or change the character of the neighborhood. It's all internal and it's above an existing garage. That's, that's about it. So it's really to provide for the needs of our family now and, and the future. We don't know how, you know, we have a number of children, grandchildren, how we all want to be able to um, financially stay where we are. And that's, that's it. Did you want to say anything now that? No, not really. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> He says, you covered it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. No, 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 that's perfectly fine. That's yeah. good. That's actually very nice. Very good. You did a very good job. Now, I'm not sure who these people are here, but we're going to give them a chance to talk if they want to. So if you could step aside, if they would like to come up and say either anything for or against it, state your name and address, and then. Okay. My name is David Landry, and I live at 14 Down Street, which is the very end house on the street. Uh, my concern, it's not as much as, say, them putting a living area in the garage. Uh, when that garage was built back, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, uh, the person who built it was not much of a carpenter. And uh, if anything, I would like to see somebody as far as a... Uh, contractor or engineer or whatever look into that building before somebody would actually live into it. Prior, uh, if you look at the way, I don't, I don't know if you've seen the pictures or whatever, when the person, Joe, who built that, the garage is piecemealed. There's a lot of out exterior wood that's, you know, four feet, six feet, ten feet, whatever, anything, and uh, the electrical, there's not much of an electrical in it. Uh, of course, there's no water, and no sewer, no insulation, no whatever. Uh, so a lot of stuff would be have to be done to that because, like I said, when I when that was built, I lived at 12 Down Street, right next door to it. And it's more as a safety thing, you know what I mean? It's I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I don't want to see the building collapse or do anything to it so my main concern is that you know if they want to go through the the right channels and do it fine let them do it you know I don't care and it's just mostly you know going through the building and making sure everything is good so that's my only concern okay thank you very much Thanks. you all set ma'am I just want to make sure. I, 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 I if the applicant could please come back forward. Come forward. So you may have said this. Like, so I'm going to ask the first question. So you may have said this, but I just want to be clear. So you plan on doing no changes to the exterior of the building? No windows, no doors, no nothing? Maybe a window. My neighbor is correct. It's it's The outside is kind of... Uh, nailed on boards there's t111 on the lower part of it so that would have to be freshened up the interior construction is rather solid it's post and beam so it's it's pretty rigid i have no objections to someone coming and inspecting that i think that's a good idea this, this board doesn't rule on that so what would happen is if, if if the board should approve your application and then you would go through a building permit and we get a building mm -hmm. permit the building inspector would have to inspect the building what, what work you do plumbing inspector, electrical inspector, all that would, would, would follow through with it. Okay. So this board doesn't have to deal with, doesn't deal with necessarily the code compliance. We just deal whether you meet the ordinance or the variance. But you would still have to go through the application for, sure. a, for a building permit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, questions for the applicant. Mr. 
Mr. Burdett. So I'm going to go back to the criteria I always seem to find myself back at is what is what is the what is the hardship and in this situation my understanding is we would have to find that your property is somehow different than other properties in an area in a manner that would allow us to grant this based on that difference um well it is different uh like my wife said it's the largest garage in the in the neighborhood with exception actually of this gentleman <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, but I uh the, one of the attractions we bought the house uh last june so we're we're new residents there and one of the attractions was the fact that the yard was fenced in we have two small grandchildren uh and so the only way we can get to the backyard is is through the gate in the front between the the house and the garage and so if we were to make an addition to meet the criteria of the as of the um, ordinance as it stands on one side there well on one side of the house is just a tree and that's the end of the property line and the other side is that area that goes to the backyard um, at that 18 feet let me ask a question yeah. to try and continue on that. So I'm looking at an aerial view of your house, mm -hmm. I believe is your house. <coughs> and to the left of your house, you have a side yard, right? It's to the left? To the left. So you look at your house to your left. The garage is on the right. Yep. On the left of your house, you have a side yard, right? There's, there's nothing on the side. You're talking about in the front or in the back? On the side. Um, there's n there's a walk. By, by there's this a picture, walk through. This is your house, and you have a side yard here. There's a walk through. This would indicate you have probably 20 to 30 feet of distance from you, your house to the property line. No. So this thing would indicate this is your house, right? Yeah. This would indicate that here you have about 20 to 30 feet. I guess it's all 30 feet. Where's the picture? You got that picture? I think because I looked at it today. The tree was right next to the side of our house. It's right out of my bedroom. Does anybody know about it? The back? So you actually you actually have 20 feet beyond that. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. But um, I guess we don't use it because. So we have we have uh, maybe maybe 10 feet, and then we have a, our neighbor next to us has a fence right up against ours. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'm not I, honestly, unless I got a survey, I'm not sure exactly right. where. But, yeah, but where are the fence is right now. There's only sufficient space to walk around uh, the side of the house. You know, there's like shrubbery there, and, and it's. Yeah, we don't go there, so we don't even. <laughs> we just go through the center. So I'm going to ask a kind of a, a different question on that. So on that end of the house, yeah. what is on that end of your house on the inside? Yeah, uh, bedrooms and yeah, two bedrooms. Is so. Is there a door on that side of the house? No. There's no door on that side of the house. Is there a door on the back side of your house? Yes. Okay. The sunroom? Yeah. So we have this glass kind of, well, it's like a porch. It's not heated. There's a door going down the deck there. Okay. So there's an existing sunroom on the back of the house. Or on the side. Is that the side or the back? It's on the side of the house. On the side behind this fence, right? I guess I'm a little yeah. confused. It's next to the fence. Next to the fence. Next to the fence. Gotcha. Behind your your what do you call that entranceway? Yes. Right. Right. Okay. So yeah. behind behind your entranceway. Right. There is. That's okay. So that's the door. Now, is there any door on the back of your house? The only one is through the sunroom. Only one is through the sunroom. Well, there is there is a basement door. So there's a basement door. There is a basement door. Um, yeah. That you go up like a bulkhead. You go up. Yep, the a bulkhead mm -hmm. access. Yeah. So. Have you considered putting, is there, is the basement finished? No. Have you considered putting the ADU in the basement? No. Not. Because? No, it's not a livable space. Because? It's, first of all, it's, it's lower than standard. It's just a little bit over seven foot high. And then, so it's, it's a rather low ceiling. It's also not a very pleasant place to live. So pleasant's not a descriptive term. Why is it not pleasant? All right, because it, uh, it, 
when it rains, we do get a little bit of water coming in. I'm guessing there's a French drain around, <coughs> but there is some uh, water entering. Uh, you have uh, it's most of it is below ground level. Light coming in. Okay. Yeah. So your sunroom, your sunroom does it have an outside door? It does. Where does that go? To the back of the yard. To the back of the yard. We're just trying to see if, how reasonable it is. So, so the requirement is that the obviously the requirements are that it's connected to the house, right? In our mind, the purpose of that is to make it look like we're not in a duplex neighborhood. We're not in a multifamily neighborhood. So, for us to approve a variance, we want to make sure the characteristics of the neighborhood is is okay and just there's uniqueness enough that you you can't because money is is not what we can we don't take money into consideration, okay. Is it not? Is it reasonable for you to build an addition off the back of your house? You know, if you don't want to spend the money, I understand. Is, it, is that a more reasonable thing for an ADU to meet the requirements versus putting it in your garage? So that's what we have to evaluate. Okay. So that's why I'm trying to get some information. So you, you kind of rule that the basement is a, isn't a reasonable alternative to put an ADU in. I understand that, but that's what I we need to get, need that information to kind of try and figure that out. Right. It's it's. Uh it wouldn't be suitable. It would also take away from the, the yard, which is not very large. And so this is a, so we'd be taking up space that the children used to, to play with. You mean putting it on the back of the On the back of the, oh, yeah. Gosh. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a third of an acre, is that right? It's a third. Right. Other questions for the applicant? Right. So, if, if you were to, so one of the key things on my mind, and I'm, gonna, I'm asking this to you so I have the answer before we go into, we close the public hearing, <coughs> is not to change the characteristics of the neighborhood. So if the board were, if, to me, if it, if, the garage, if it still looks like a garage, then we really haven't changed the characteristics of the neighborhood. So if you were to, for, let's say, and you're not proposing this, but I'm gonna give you an example. If you were gonna build it on the first floor of your garage, and put a bay window in one side and a front door in the other. Now it's looking like a two separate buildings, two houses. So, but your proposal is the second floor. Okay, some garages have windows in the front. I haven't decided. There is one window in the. Front. There's a yeah. I see. There's a the, the a pass through thing, right? That's in the front. Yeah. That's in the front. I see that. Yeah. So, but everything else, the whole thing, <coughs> would be on the second floor of the garage. Right. With the in, the stairs are inside. Of Right, the, and the stairs are inside, so you wouldn't add it to the inside. And is there um, access to, is there windows on the back of the garage? No. Are the, are the access door to the garage is where? At this time, there is none. There's two double big right. doors. There's right, no so separate it's just, we just access through these hinged garage doors. We may put it's the kind that roll up, but, you know, automatic, but we weren't. Your plan is so. Your plan is not to put in a, a personal access door. Yes, I, oh. I, it is my plan, oh. but it requires us to move that that uh, uh, fence in the front back about four feet, and then we put the door right there. Okay. So you put a personal access door on the front corner of the garage. Right. Yeah, on the side. You wouldn't see it from the road. It would be on the side of it. Right. Okay. No, I understand that. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Any other questions, Mr. Brooks? I'm coming up with questions more for Dana concerning um, regulations on these. I mean, obviously these are relatively new to us. Only a few years ago these were enacted by the state to be allowed by, by right, basically. But we have the jurisdiction to regulate it with some criteria, which the city has done. I don't. Is there anything that says that they do or don't? As far as like a kitchen for this ADU, would it anything that prohibits or insists that it has to have one, or is that kind of open ended? Um, if it's an ADU, I think they would have a kitchen. Um, our regulations in the ordinance do not speak to kitchens. No, because okay. I, I noticed it says that it speaks utilities have to be shared, but mm -hmm. it kind of leaves it at that with. Yeah, so I think that description in, here. that's intending st uh, stuff like electric, water, sewer, um, 
those type of utilities. The only, we don't speak to kitchens in the ordinance. We do speak to bedrooms, though, and how it's connected for um, sewer and things like that. And obviously, they have to have a certificate issued. I assume code enforcement would look at life safety. Correct. As, as far as egress, um, safety, yep. exits, as, and so on as well. Yep. The chair indicated that they would need building permits. Um, it would go through the certificate of occupancy process for that because it would be um, a unit where someone's dwelling. Yeah. Just things that are coming to mind as we sit here and deal with one of these, yep. one of our first ones. I think we've only had one other before us. So um, just wanted to ask those for a minute. Any question for the advocate, Mr. Brooks? Not, not at this moment. I guess I was just. <laughs> Maybe if there's other questions, I guess. <laughs> other questions for the applicant? I know other towns have said if it has a kitchen, it's an ADU. If it doesn't have a kitchen, it's not an ADU. It's one of the things they use to determine whether it's an ADU or not. Not sure what some you know how, how it goes, but that was but a different issue. So I guess I do have a question or two. Um, so obviously there would be some sort of construction involved, regardless of where this goes. Just uh, just internally, and and it, it's true. The the two changes that would be made uh, ex on the exterior would be the access door, and that that little cutout would be replaced with a proper window. Other than that, there would be no, no physical change, and the siding is not the nicest. So, yeah. yeah. And you said you do have a basement that's seven feet tall, yeah. roughly. Roughly. <coughs> um, is that a full basement, the full length of the house, area-wise? Uh, except for the the sunroom, yeah. So, fairly a substantial amount of area mm -hmm. that could be. Converted as well, so you'd have that option it's, potentially. It's complicated because there is a step up where there was a wood stove, which we were <laughs> taking out. Uh, like I say, there is a moisture issue. It's not severe, but it is there. And, the, and there's not like light from windows. It's kind yeah, of it's not. Dingy. A, it's not a, a welcoming living space. Yeah. <laughs> like the mice like it. <laughs> They feel welcome. <laughs> also, Mr. Brooks? Yeah. Mr. Fredette? So your, your, I'm looking <coughs> at your plan. You said the door is going to go on the side. Yes. So are you, you are putting the living room is going to be, to orient myself, so the living room is going to be in the front and the bedroom is going to be in the back. Is that what you're? Correct. Okay. I, I'm just, so you're going to remove that door that is there, that access door, and it looks like from your drawing you're going to put some sort of a double window or something in? Correct. Okay, and then obviously necessary egress windows and all that in the back mm -hmm. of the bedroom. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions for the applicant? Last comments by the applicant. All right, if you have a seat, not close the public hearing. Discussion by the board. Mr. Burdett. I know we get these from time to time, and <clears throat> I think ADUs in the right setting are a good potential avenue. I think the challenge, and I, I think of another board member who's not here tonight, who, <coughs> when we had another one of these, said to me, or said to the board, you know, if this goes through, it'll be the best day of my life, because I've got a house with a garage, and I can put a ADU in the garage. And I think the challenge here is while each case has to stand on its own i do try to look at the criteria like the hardship criteria sometimes a little more closely for cases like these because we do have to consider that in future decisions um i just i don't think this meets the hardship criteria to the necessity that it needs to based on the current definition that we use for an adu in summersworth discussion by the board. Mr. Hilton. I, th I think that this does meet the hardship issue as far as 
the cost of housing, the cost the family is living in the house now, and if it would provide uh, another housing unit to be able to take care of the family in the future, the son could live there and help out with the parents in the future, that would be a big plus. And um, I think that that's, that should be a consideration. Um, we have in the past um, voted on things that were um, <coughs> too close to the property line or this, that, or the other. And uh, because of hardship in the family, we allowed those things. And I think that this would be a, a good opportunity to keep the family together work together and um, provide for yeah provide for everybody for discussion by the board yeah I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling with it because looking at the true so all three criteria a B and F that they, they do not would not meet are obviously all interrelated that they're it's connected, it's connected internally, um, need use contained within the addition, or, or it's inside, it's inside <coughs> an existing structure. Uh, one of the key things is, um, and uh, we, we need to lo we'll look at is, what's the purpose of the ordinance? Why is it that these are the criteria that we meet, met, meet we, we need to meet for an ADU? Um, and as I alluded to earlier, I think it's so it, it doesn't look like it's a duplex. Was it? Well, we'll do regional impact. Yes, we'll do regional impact. Uh, yeah, we'll do that in a, in a moment. Yep, that's all right. You know, I, I get you. Okay, we'll do it right now so we don't forget it. Regional impact. Anyone see any regional impact? No. Let us hand a motion. Yes, uh, let's Hilton. Um, I, I move that this uh, does not have potential for regional impact. The advantage request for Dominique and Diane Mitrude does not have any regional impact. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Perkins. All those in favor of the motion? Okay, no regional impact. So what I was, I was saying is, this, so it's all in, in relay that, so it's really to change the, and I think the characteristics of the neighborhood, so, so I'm, I'm really trying to weigh that whether um, th th there's enough uniqueness uh, if we just put it in the top of the garage, you know, or, or do, we, do we still meet the intent of the ordinance? Did we unnecessarily burden them with having it detached, or can they meet the ordinance with it attached but being limited to not changing the exterior of the garage to, to only look like a garage and only have it in the upstairs? And that's that's kind of what I'm trying to, to weigh with, to, to think through. Ms. Jones. Um, I'd like to add just a little bit of a historical lens here. I don't have like a super strong opinion one or the other. I think I would like to see this go through, but I kind of fear that their only avenue is to adjust the zoning to allow it by right. Um, the ADU definition is actually at the state level and it is defined as attached. That is a requirement for it to be considered an ADU. So I think the reason Summersworth only allows them to be attached and a lot of other towns do this as well is because it's that's how it's defined at the state level. Um, Forgot where it's going to go from here. I had I had something. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate that. Yeah, um, and, and to add on to that, because I know of a case in Rye in which a person applied for an ADU that was was uh, detached, but one of the conditions of the approval was that it would be attached within five or ten years, whatever some period of time that the plan was for it to be attached. But that, so for example, so that that would follow upon what you were saying that it's a state requirement. Yeah, so I think kind of part of the battle here is whether the fact that they have a detached garage in of itself is a hardship, and I would argue that's not really very unique. Um, a lot of lots, especially nearby, given that the neighbor also has a detached garage, um, you know, exactly kind of what you mentioned is if we grant this, what's stopping the neighbor from also putting in an ADU? It has to kind of be the collateral damage, so to speak, not that this would be damage, but it has to be limited to this lot, and I don't think that would be here. Mr. Fredette and then Mr. Brooks. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Another thought here is obviously there has to be uh, some sort of remodelization alterations made to this building to make it ready to live in. And whereas this would go with the land, 
once it's granted, it stays there. What's to stop them from making the whole building a house and remodel it to the point that it's no longer a garage? Now it looks like a multifamily with two buildings on the property. So, you know, I, I see both sides of this. I'm, I'm not saying I'm against this because, again, I I think that the ADUs are a good idea. Um, I, I think because they're new, the cities and towns are wrestling with how do we regulate them to the point that they fit in and don't become just another building, um, you know, and overcrowd and change the character of the neighborhoods as well. So um, obviously the garage being 18 feet away is, you know, a substantial addition to try to connect it as well. So, but maybe if it was limited to the upstairs, I don't know if that's maybe a way to kind of satisfy the requirements that we have in Summersworth that that way it's not you know they're not converting the lower half of the building keeping it a garage in the process that way it remains an ADU and not in second residence just a thought Mr. Burnett you know I think it's also while it is outside of the purview of this board I think it's important to consider that the I mean when I think of an ADU and I think of attachment this is going to be in some ways I mean it's going to require some substantial work to get connected utilities out to this structure I just again I think ADUs are a great idea I just go back to you know it, it we need and, and I remember doing probably three or four of these that we we've been very pointed and I think to Mr. Jones's point and looking at it that at this point this is the state definition I think if if Summersworth was sometimes we do run into situations in our zoning ordinance where Summersworth is is very unique for a, a zone or a definition here I think <coughs> We need to follow the state's definition as guidance unless there are extreme mitigating circumstances. And, and the second floor of putting it on the second floor of the garage, I don't think that meets the definition of uniqueness relative to allowing it to be detached, if that makes any sense. Mr. Hilton, sorry. Um, as far as the, whenever you say attached, would a covered walkway count as attachment? Actually, it will not. It's right, at, right in the uh, criteria is that that is not good. That is not good enough. It does not meet the requirements. A, uh, I believe it's called. Uh, it has to be more than a says breezeway. Attached does not include <coughs> via the use of a breezeway, <coughs> so it right. even calls that out specifically. But an underground tunnel. That, that would be okay. <laughs> you can afford it. That would be okay. I do know someone who has one. Here's an idea. <laughs> that way you'd have your walkway into the backyard too. For a discussion by the board. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Fredette. After review of the application, the file, and all the information presented to the board, I feel that all five criteria have not been satisfied, specifically the, um, I'm actually going to say again, the spirit of the ordinance for connection or attachment, the hardship criteria, and I am going to say that I am not convinced at this point that it won't alter the character of the neighborhood by the time this construction project is complete. And I move that the application from for a variance from section 19.24 A, B, and F to allow accessory dwelling unit 
that is detached and not internally connected on a property located at 10 Down Street be denied? A motion to a second. Second by Mr. Brooks. Discussion on the motion. So I would say there's three key things here uh, in my mind. One, it's the state specific definition of an ADU which requires it to be attached. Two, that there is no unique criteria, uh, characteristics of the property that uniquely burden it for meeting the requirements. Uh, and three, which you were talking about, is the physical appearance of the property could change such that it no longer looks like a garage. Could. I'm not saying it would, but it could. Okay. For a discussion on the motion. The motion is to deny the variance. All those in favor of the motion to deny the variance, raise your right hand. Can I note something? Oh, yes, you may. The the RSA does allow communities to decide if they don't want them to be attached. They yeah. can be attached. Detached. I, so I apologize if I was kind of like okay, that's all right. insinuating so it that. It's, it's the, the historical framework is these were banned statewide by a lot of communities, and yeah. the state wanted to open up. This is actually a minimum standard that towns have to adopt, but obviously they're free yeah. to go further. You, you can make the – so attached ones have to be allowed somewhere within your ordinance, but you can make the – communities make the decision whether or not they um, yeah, can be – Attached yeah, um, so just for a little clarification nope, nope, before you guys vote in nope, case that's that good. that's a good clarification. And, uh, so they can be ditch de detached. The community would have to adopt their language um, and ordinance in that way, and Summersworth has not chosen to do that. Um, we do not permit them to be detached um, in our ordinance. No, but the RSA allows the flexibility for the communities to make that decision. But a variant, you could grant a detached one, so we could deta grant a, a detached one by a variance. So that's, what you, that's uh. the point. So even though that's our criteria, if they meet the five, the five criteria for a variance, then they could be granted a granted one for a detached. Okay. So, Mr. Fredette, did you want to Does make that mean we should take the language for the state definition out of the... But we have adopted the state definition... We, out of what? Out of the well, I'm sorry, I didn't put it in the motion. Correct. Correct. I did not put okay. it in the motion. I put it in discussion. I, sorry, I put it in discussion, I, but you did. Yep, and I was clarified or corrected, elaborated. Right, Mr. Fredette. And I know there is some. I understand that there is some discussion at the city level on kind of looking at this, and I know that doesn't ap apply and and offer immediate relief to these applicants, but I am of the belief that that is probably, unfortunately, while it is not the quickest, is probably the best route for situations like this is to encourage the city council to look into changing the ordinance if that is their wish. Yep. For a discussion on the motion. So the motion is to deny the variance based on criteria that it does, does not meet the hardship criteria and does not meet the spirit, does not meet the spirit of the ordinance. All those in favor of the motion to deny the variance, raise your right hand. Those opposed, four to one, the variance is denied. Any other new business that may come before the board? Ms. Crosley. You have in your packets your um, 2024 calendar. Please note January 3rd, if we receive applications, we would have our first meeting of 2024. Just in case you have holiday plans, please let us know in advance. Yeah, it's a holiday. You never know. <laughs> uh, any new business by the board members? Mr. Fredette? I don't know if we have to wait until the calendar and date gets closer, but if we looked at the third and talked about moving the July meeting, just because that seems to become an issue every year that it's the fourth, and then it's like, well, what do we do? Because we want to make sure we have room space, so on and so forth. But it is the third. For 2024, is that something we can look at now before the calendar goes out, or should we just wait? We can look at it right now. <laughs> so would you like to propose delaying it one week? Like to make a proposal? No, 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 just, oh, sorry. Just, yeah, just yeah, yeah I, that's fine. I, I'd be fine with that if, if everybody else is, is, especially if it's the third, because people tend to want to take go away or... 
I can discuss that with Director Mears, and um, we will work on that and bring something to the next meeting we have. Sorry. No, that's good. Thanks for bringing that up. Any other new business? Mike one. What would it take to um, push for the city council to take up these zoning board changes that we've been, that we've been talking? You know, that we've been. If there's if, so, what we could happen is either we could have a workshop, or we could just in general, if, if we felt strongly about some issue, if we still strongly about an issue, then we will task the director to bring bring us a proposal. You know, and we don't have to propose the exact words. We can propose an idea, and then it goes to the planning board. The planning board takes a look at it to see if that's what the city wants to do, and, and they gin up what should go to the city council to get approved or disapproved. Yeah, the most recent one that came from a suggestion from the zoning board was the business district along Main Street where we did not allow for new residential units on the first level. Um, the zoning board received a lot of those uh, variance requests and suggested to the, um, it started with the prior director Saunders um, and then in turn Director Mears inherited the project um, and worked with the planning board for a zoning amendment that was proposed to council and adopted that does permit it on a certain area of Main Street. Um, so if there was something the board is receiving a lot of variances for and they would like us to bring that, um, I can bring something to Director Mears for her review and then potential workshops with the planning board. Okay. I'd like to shed some light on that too. Um, I actually attended a housing focus work shop that we had recently just I think it was last week or the week before it's very recent and um, there was a number of things discussed there and a lot of it based on housing but it bled over into other topics as well and at the same time I think they're going to be reaching out to the mayor-elect Mr. Gerding and he's expressed um, the willingness to put together a group to look at zoning and potentially make some changes. So I, I think there's some stuff already in the works there, but obviously suggestions could only help with that. And the more that get involved, the better. So Ms. Cross, if you could take it just, and I'm not sure what the right answer is, to have, have, have them take a look at whether 80 detached ADUs is a smart thing for the city. I don't know mm -hmm. the right answer. Yep. They can evaluate, just evaluate it and see if they think it is. Yep, and as um, Mr. Brooks <coughs> indicated, we are working on our housing master plan chapter. Um, so accessory dwelling units is a big conversation, obviously, that dwells around um, housing and things like that. It is definitely on Director Mears radar of um, things to look at, discuss, and um, explore whether or not updating that portion of the ordinance to be more flexible with those is the right choice for the city. Um, so I will reiterate, though, that that was a conversation that was had here to her. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Any other new business? Motion, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Hilton, second by Mr. Brooks. All those in favor, raise your right hand. We are adjourned. Thank you.